What's up, guys? It's Jay, Morning After Kill, and we're in the swing of this tournament. You guys are kicking some ass watching the videos. Told you guys I was going to have some more guest commentators, and I have the man of the hour, the big man himself, Mr. DJ Arcus. How are you doing? Oh, I was doing quite well to call the man of the hour. That's, that's, yeah. that's insulting, man. Oh, all right. Well, we'll call you the man <laughs> of the last six months. Man of the decade. How about that? All right. That'll work. So uh, <laughs> it's a pleasure having you on. Uh, I'm going to start the video so, you know, we get right into this. This is Life Siphon's world, and his architecture is a bit different than everybody's. He builds more on a diagonal scale with the custom blocks. that something you don't see a lot of other worlds doing. So he's built his whole world 45 degrees out from true. A lot of them are. Uh, some of them, like you could tell, like these are his earlier builds. They're a little bit more plain, a little bit more simple. And, you know, you got the, the dreaded pixel art going on. But at <laughs> least he, he picked a good series to do it on. Well, the pixel art, even surprising because he's done it all on a flat plane. But even there, you can see the characters have depth. You know, like his leg is one. Yeah. Bit, I, yeah I'm surprised people don't give that just a little bit more depth. So when you're walking around, it's a bit more 3D. So uh, while we're watching this, I'm going to, you know, let DJ Arcus take the mic. He has a lot of things going on with the uh, actual Projector Games company. And, you know, why don't you take it away and let me know what you're up to, man? Yeah, well, I, uh, I think the biggest news that uh, a lot of people appear to have missed is that I, I'm currently in the process of learning the OnLive SDK, which is the um, uh, cloud gaming, cloud streaming game system. So you don't don't have to download the game. You don't even have to have a console. You just run the game remotely and it streams to your computer or to the micro console or your iPad and stuff. So uh, I want to port Fortress Craft to that. Uh, but before I do that, well, wow, that's just sorry. That's amazing what he's done. That's just fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, if you watch, keep watching the video, he actually has a whole theme of where the uh, technological world's being overtaken by the nature again. But yeah, so Fortress Craft's a really big game, like enormous one. You know, but one of the biggest games I've ever worked on in my, you know, for myself. Um, so what I'm um, doing is I'm porting another game of mine, Steam Heroes, across to online, so I can learn the system and. And, and just so I don't arrive on that system not knowing anything at all, which is what's going to happen if I uh, if I just do that. So as I've spent a few days in the last week learning the online system, porting Steam Heroes across, um, which has been a pain because my brain is just full of stuff I need to do on Fortress Craft. So I, I sort of let go of the RPG mode. The RPG mode is now in part so people can play with it. And uh, uh, it's been uh, the other stuff. Speaking of Steam Heroes, uh, you also released that uh, you were going to release like a thank you letter to everybody by offering the Harrison Axe, and a lot of people, you know, they they didn't know that the last re the last update was actually in peer review before you released or had that planned. Uh, you want to, you know, give a little bit of update on that? Yeah, well, I mean, the so Steam Heroes has got three major things that I'm doing to it. I'm adding in achievements. Uh, for on live i'm adding in new graphics that todd has been doing and i'm adding in the unlock code so on the title screen you, you just select one of the options which just says unlock axe uh, i love that spaceship uh, and then it gives you a code and then when 1.1 alpha fortress craft 1.1 alpha is released you'll be able to enter your code and then it will unlock the axe for you so if you bought steam hero it doesn't matter when you buy it you don't have to buy it now you can buy it then, but I, I would buy it now. It, it's it's quite good. Also, he's got some flowers on his. <laughs> yeah, he put nice um, flowers. In. Speaking of buying it, yeah, I did buy it and I got addicted to it for a few days. But my girlfriend plays it because she loves those puzzle style games. Yeah, well, um, I I loved. It. I mean, it was based a lot on uh, a game called Puzzle Quest, which I loved. And I, the idea was to release a simple game, and if it sold okay, to sort of work towards a more complicated multiplayer rpg loot based game but it, it, so it didn't do very well the weird thing about steam heroes is everyone who's played it and i do mean everyone goes wow this is really good oh you sold loads of copies and i go nope so um it, it does surprise me that it's done so badly i mean i say everyone who's played it has just gone wow that's really good so hopefully on on live a whole bunch more people will play it um that's awesome as well. Yeah. I feel I should say I feel I should say more about the world, but I can't. I'm just watching it going. That is awesome. There is my review. The end. I'm glad I'm not judging it. I don't, I, everyone would be winning. That's that's what I was like. That's why I left it up to the, the you know the Fortress Craft fans, the community. I mean, it's just too much for one person to decide. It really is. Yeah. I mean, my only complaint there is he's not using any custom blocks to sort of smooth things off. 
Uh, I love it when people d- develop something like that and then go in with the custom blocks and put in all the corners and the details and things like that. Well, uh, maybe he'll take your advice, and if we see him in the later rounds and he gets refilmed, we might be uh, you know, surprised at what he does with the customs. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, the, uh, the drawback, of course, with the customs is they do impact performance, and it's something like that. I do keep trying to tell people is that the the Minecraft rendering, the voxel rendering, is super fast. It's really, really perfectly optimal, but the custom blocks are not. And that that's their nature. They're not voxel rendering. Uh, you know, they just um, that, that's just how they are. So you, you've got to weigh up whether or not adding custom blocks is is a good idea. I mean, I see people like creating entire walls out of customs, and I'm thinking, you really want to do that with the normal blocks, just just for sheer performance. That's like Andy's world. His whole spawn is nothing but custom blocks. And... Yeah, he's got... He, if you click the left stick now, it shows you the count, but he's got 18,000 custom blocks at the wow. start. It's like... You are... I mean, that's not my code. That's the sheer fill and, and uh, transform rate of the Xbox GPU. There's nothing you can... More you can squeeze out of the poor little Xbox. So I, I don't I don't want to cut you off, but uh, this right here is what I was waiting for you to see because this is just the architecture that he's got here is simply fantastic. He's not going to like the next patch then. Uh, so what I'm planning on doing, in fact, directly after uh, we've done this, is I'll be working on the cut and paste functionality because it's been rattling around in my brain. Uh, Paul <laughs> is going to hate me as well. He'd be like, but I've, I've done it all by hand. But what I want to do is I want, I want to make it so anyone can create this. You know, that, that's my mm-hmm. goal. Not necessarily that, but so any newbie, crappy, unimaginative person can create something as amazing as this. But that it makes the, like, the, the work easier for the people who are really, really good at the game. And I'm actually really pleased because he said this is what he calls his God Temple. And this usually, you know, it took me about like three times for this thing. It crashed me out because there's so many custom blocks. It's all custom blocks. And, you know, I'm just glad that it actually held together long enough for me to get footage of it, even if it's a little, uh, you know, frames dropping. Yeah, uh, I mean, this is this is a Kinsley. I keep trying to explain to people is you can have it high detail or you can have it long draw and or you can have lots of stuff but you, you can't have all of it you've got to you've got to pick and choose what you want in your world because uh, it's only an xbox <laughs> but uh you know that was life siphon's world uh we're gonna be taking a look at the next guy his name is uh goose goose 006 and skype is being a dickhead to me right now is he a spy uh, I hope not. <laughs> uh, well, if if he is a spy, you better make sure he wins. He's a spy for minecart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, someone was screaming on me on YouTube because that's what people do. Apparently, when minecart comes out, my get my company is uh, in trouble. <laughs> All right, this is uh, Goose Worlds. I'm about to give this start up. Uh, his world is a bit more playful. Uh, I like what he did with it because it's the the only amusement park that I've actually seen in the tournament entries when I was. Is this out. the uh, is this the guy with the working ghost train? Uh, I don't know about the working ghost train. Because uh, some guy he was uh, he said I've done a working ghost train because he's using he's used the, uh, he's built the little scary carts and monsters move around when you walk and stuff. Uh, so, uh, uh, this is not. I have not seen that world. I've, I've, I've not seen it either, and I'm like, I want to see this ghost train. But he's got a. Like, oh wow! <laughs> yeah, he's spelled a, a missed mess. opportunity there, though. I think to have uh, used conveyors. Well, I didn't allow the conveyors in my world because I in the tournament yet because I started filming people's worlds before the patch came out, and the patch came out right in the middle of where I was filming. So uh, the conveyors will be making an, uh, a debut when the uh, round three refilmers get done. Ah, okay, that's going to be very interesting. Yeah, that's going to change uh, the whole scope of the tournament. Oh, yeah. right there. Now, all of the stuff we've seen so far is not the latest. So you don't have any custom objects, no physics, no lasers, and all of that. This is technically old builds. Then that we're, we're pretty watching. much this is uh, this is about maybe about a week and a half. Uh, you know, old before the patch came out. So, you know, this isn't everything that Fortress Craft can do, but we will see what what's going to be happening later on in the tournament. Because, you know, I've seen some really cool things. I have to actually have them name their <laughs> custom their factories off so that they didn't throw you know blocks all over the place when I was filming. Yeah, I uh, so this guy. I suspect that Goose is a bit of a uh, theme park fan. 
I'm suspecting too, and we've seen a lot of ships in this tournament, not a swinging ship. I love those rides. Yeah, it's a shame Fortress Craft won't let you actually animate the whole thing. That would be amazing. But, uh, yeah, I, like I said, I picked this guy's world because, you know, it's a really fun world. It's a cool world. Uh, you know, it's real bright, colorful, you know, just, you know, I got happy when I saw it because I love theme parks. I love amusement parks. And I was just like, oh, wow. It's like I actually ran through it. It's all Avatar scale. I ran through it without my jet pack. And it was really fun. Yeah, it's awesome. I really like that. It's, it, I kind of, that's how I just want to allow people to like write a theme park type game in Fortress Craft and stuff. But yeah, I love that. It's really awesome. Yeah, it kind of reminded me of like a 3D roller coaster tycoon. Hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, all, all he did say, hopefully he's got some, he, he's experimented with the custom objects to, uh, so the physics objects to try and get that working now. So if he gets through to the next round, we'll see what he manages. Yeah, and maybe see a guy, you know, flying around on a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's also done a few things with his world that not a lot of people's done. He's taken advantage of the flatland, and uh, he's built himself a spleef and hunt and freeze tag arena. Because, I mean, a lot of people really miss out on the uh, extra game modes that you put in there because they're so busy on building Yes, I, I mean, I mean, a few people did complain that I broke them, and I, I sort of replied with, I get a hundred thousand people ask about copy and paste and teleporters and signs, and like one guy says, "Oh, freeze mag." Uh, if more people talk to me about the game modes, I do more on the game modes, but I get very little feedback on the game modes, so I assume that not many people actually do the game modes. There you guys hear it, man. You guys, you guys want some more game modes? Or you want some, uh, you know? Extra things in the game modes. Tweet uh, Arcus. He's got his uh, Twitter. I think it's at Fortress underscore Craft. And yeah. So did he just have a chess? I just read you could you could play chess in the game, couldn't you? You could build a chess set and then use custom blocks for uh, um, the um, the chess piece. You could actually sit in Fortress and play chess. That would be awesome. That would be uh, actually wow. I never thought about that. You could you could just I... beat the block and move it. Yeah, because I saw somebody build a full-size chess set, but they were massive, but with the custom blocks. You could, I mean, obviously, they'd still be a meat at all. It's still quite big. Mm -hmm. But, so, yeah, you, you could play chess in Fortress Craft. And, yeah. you know, checkers, maybe backgammon. I don't, I don't know how you play backgammon. We actually had a... The chess set was on. Yeah, well, I saw the chess set, and I was like, you could just... Uh... So this guy will like the... Um... Uh, he will like the the next patch. The plan is to uh, allow auto rebuilding of Spleef Arena. So you fight in Spleef Arena, Look at this. and then it this and is it rebuilds nine, itself and you're done. Nine story Spleef Arena. Oh my god! It's just amazing. So he really well, takes time with that, though. Yeah, I mean, I, I love it when I see people do this because unless someone tells me about it, I don't know. I do join worlds. I, I do sit there uh, every, about once a week. I do spend the entire evening just joining world, world after world after world, looking and going around. But you know, I don't have that much time, and unless they happen to be on, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just not going to see that. Mm -hmm. So. Now, it's good to see that people are actually uh, doing this. I'm not sure about the lava underneath the water there. That's not going to be uh, pretty. Uh, now that you mentioned that, though, uh, we just see that bridge and this bridge. You mentioned something about on Twitter <laughs> about bridges to sky. You can't elaborate I, on I that? Just, just, I, just had, no, I just had a good idea, and I need, to, I need to spend some time coding it and see if it works. So, Because uh, he was saying that you can't make good bridges in Minecraft, uh, and but you can with the custom blocks in Fortress Craft. And I was like... Hmm, I think I could do better than what we've got. So, it, again, although I'm going to be doing RPG stuff, I want to focus still about 50% of my focus on the creative side of Fortress Craft. I need to make sure I don't forget that. And especially when we're going on to new platforms, make sure the creative tools are as good as they can be. All right, and uh, I got one or two more things. Uh, number one is the question I get by everybody is, are there new blocks coming into the game anytime soon? Um... Yeah, I, to be honest, with the new blocks, no one specifically said, "Are oh, we really warm? No. Todd is doing what we've d deemed to be an urban set of blocks. So this is what you would the set of blocks that you would use to build a house in the real world. So we've got the, the kiddie house stuff and then we've got the futuristic stuff. Now we've got modern stuff. So it'd be like, you know, shingles and, and, and carpet and, you know, they're not be very exciting. I mean, if it's like, like a worn like brick look. Yeah, and we've got a few bricks, but more bricks. So you know, if there's something specific people want, let me know. 
Um, otherwise, Todd will just go away and just do whatever it feels like, and then we put it in the game. We want that's so how we that's how we work here. Cobble pavers, that's what we want. Yeah, but yeah, so that that sort of things he'll do. He usually does like a couple of four blocks, a couple of wall blocks, and a couple of ceiling blocks, and then just a couple of random bits and bobs. And uh, one more question for you. Uh, I know I'm dragging this on just a tad, a little bit long, but uh, we had a little bit of a big announcement between uh, us and the Forge of Scrap Testers regarding the uh, tournament. And I was wondering, do you want to drop that bomb on them now, or do you want to let them wait it out? Um, no, I th- let, 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 let's get through to the first uh, the first wave. Let, let's yeah. get the first round out of the way. All right, let's. You guys got some uh, big news coming regarding the tournament, and you know I'd like to thank DJ Arcus for you know not only the game, you know not only for taking the time out to come on here, but you know for listening to the community and doing what he can with this game, and you know making the most successful Xbox Live indie game of all time. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be here. It really was. And you're welcome on the channel anytime, Arcus. So. I look forward to that. <laughs> All right. So would you guys to vote in the comments below, favorite the video so everybody can see it. The more people that see it, the more accurate the vote is going to be. And I'm Jay, Morning After Kill, and I'll talk to you guys later with some more Fortress Craft footage. See you guys later.